We have our title, Richard Avocado, set, and we have our byline, Arlington High School, set in two different forms so you can tell which is which. But you may want a more clear cue than what we have on screen already. And this is where graphics come in. And so now I'm going to show you how you can insert logos into a production, whether they be pictures, graphics, or anything else that you want to include on the screen. So we're going to go back, click on the horizontal panel again on the tools palette. We will click and drag to create a space on the left side of the screen in this case. And you see we have another white box, that's fine. Now go to the bottom of the screen and click on the logos palette and you'll see a bunch of empty squares. All that means is that there aren't any logos that have been loaded into the program right now. If, to put logos into the program, we are going to right click on any of the boxes. Usually I go start at one and then I move all the way through, but you can start wherever you want to. So we will right click that now and you'll see an open screen pop up. Now what this is, it works just like a regular browser. And so we can scroll through each file, and if you want a preview, there's a box over here that says click here for preview, so we're going to do that. And now you can see the graphics that we are scrolling through. So whatever file you want to use, we can now see which one would work best for the production. And I mentioned this works just like a Windows Explorer browser, so if you can't find the image you're looking for here, you can click this menu, open look in and we can switch folders. I'm going to switch to my folder here on the inscriber page just because that's where I store all my graphics it's easier to find. And then we're also so now that we've set that up we will look for our logo and here it is. And now that appeared on the second square because I accidentally uploaded a different image in the first square. Now to insert this logo all you need to do is left click, make sure you have the box highlighted here. If you click on it over here and enter the logo, you'll see that it's problematic. But if that happens to you, just click Control Z, which is the shortcut for undo, and it will go back to the last command you gave a particular layer. So we'll go back to our box, click on this logo, and you see it loaded up, but it didn't exactly go the way we were looking for it. Uh, expanded a little bit and now it's off screen. That is not a problem. We'll go to the size and attributes tab at the bottom of the screen and then you'll see two different values on the lower left hand corner of this palette. One that says vertical, one that's horizontal. And so we are going to reduce our vertical value to bring this back within the safe zone. And then I will expand the horizontal size a little bit. And then we'll go to view here and then make it make a few more adjustments just to tidy this up a little bit. So we so now we have that taken care of and now you can clearly tell that the guest we are talking to is a member of Arlington High School. Now here's another trick with logos. You don't always have to work with squares, rectangles, or other shapes. If you work with Photoshop and save certain images as a PSD file, .psd, it will retain the alpha channel. And what the alpha channel is, it, it maintains any transparencies you use. Now you know how to design shapes and insert images into your graphics for a production. Of course, you don't have to do exactly everything I did if you want to mess around before production. Feel free to, and Scriber gives you those capabilities. Just make sure you don't save if you don't plan on keeping those changes.